Who said bigger is always better? What about being efficient and living to the letter? We're just lost in time, searching for the divine. If only you knew, all you need to do is free your mind. From the hate and negativity that chains you down, we are what we think. Just look around. An original poem by Callie May. Good evening, I'm Ebony. And I'm Callie. And, and welcome, welcome to WRJI Live, Woman to Woman, Woman, Lessons in Life, Love, and Common Sense. Let's first uh, give us a shout out to our sponsors, which is Hamilton's Crossing Online Mall, and that thing you do catering, along with Verge Online Magazine. Also, Karen's Daughters, located at Hamilton's Crossing Online Mall, and Goddess Cali Therapeutic Massage. In this episode, we will be discussing our perception and how it affects us in life, love, and common sense. Um, this was a live show where you could ask questions, but if you have questions, um, once it's posted, go ahead and type them in and we will address them throughout the week to try to get all your questions answered um, according to what you hear. All right. Um, let's start with the definition of perception. Um, the first definition we have is the ability to see, hear, feel, or become aware of something through the senses. It's a way of regarding, understanding, or interpreting something. Um, a mental impression, a uh, synonym for that is impression, belief, judgment, or estimation. Um, let's see, we have a little visual here. If you look at this picture, this is true, this is true, but this is the truth. If you look at this picture, you have a picture of a cylinder with two lights on it. Um, from one direction you see a square, from the other you see a circle. Both perceptions are true. Um, the square and the circle are both within the cylinder. Um, so dealing in life, we must understand that people's perceptions, they're not wrong, they're simply different from ours based on their life experiences and their history. Um, it's very important to understand this when dealing with people because you never know what people have gone through and, and where they're going, you know, and where their direction is. So it's it, just be nice, be considerate. Um, and be kind. Uh, everyone that you meet is fighting a battle that you know nothing about. Uh, life is our movie. So as we live in day to day, that's our movie. And we're the stars of our movie. And the world is our extra. We also have to keep in mind that each one of our extras has their own movie going as well. And they're the stars of their movies. And every now and then, um, uh, there's a story of when I was around 15 years old is when I got this understanding. I was uh, in the airport. We we're flying to Atlanta, but we had a layover in Vegas. And this lady walks in and she's holding like a um, like a funeral wreath, where I guess she was just coming back from a, a funeral. I don't know who died. I don't know her story. But I was watching her life play out. I was watching her movie play. And she was sad and she was crying and probably trying to make sense of what had happened to her life. Like with whoever who died was a major part of her life. And um, she was crying and I'm watching her. And for that brief moment... Our movies collided just for an instant. She had no idea that it was happening. But for me, I realized, hey, it's not just my life happening. Like, her life is playing out in front of me, too. And I'm watching her and, and learning from her, essentially, that we have we have our own movies, our own life choices and journeys. I, I have an experience like that. Mine's a little bit more funny and less serious. Mm -hmm. But um, I remember um, going down the street. I um, stopped at a light, and my job, we had these Ghirardelli chocolates with caramel mm -hmm. in them, and it had melted, like, into mm -hmm. the paper. And so I'm sitting there at the light, and I open it, and it's all gooey and everything, and I'm just into it. I'm sucking the life out of this chocolate. <laughs> and, I, I'm, and I look over, and there's a guy staring at me, cracking up laughing and for that brief moment like our our movie movies started. collided i'm sure he went on to tell the stories like i was sitting at a light and this girl was up this shot <laughs> <laughs> and um i'm sure he laughed about it i know i laughed about it i'm laughing about it right now right but, uh, our stories collided for a short moment and it it was funny it was hilarious but um i'm sure i tried to help make his day you know I could have been mm -hmm. mad or whatever right. and don't laugh at me and cuss them out or flip them off or whatever but you know I just made, made fun yeah, of it I'm like laughing it. at myself right <laughs> and we have to understand like in life sometimes our movies collide with another person's movie for an instant but then at other times it may collide 
permanently, like with our children, because our children have their own movie going, mm -hmm. and our parents and sisters and brothers and colleagues and coworkers, each. But on a permanent basis, we're dealing with these, and for our, our movies are colliding, and that's where the perceptions become a problem mm -hmm. relationally. Because in my movie, I see a square, and in your movie, you may see a circle mm -hmm. um, when it comes to a situation. Um, and most arguments stem from a, a difference of opinion, a difference of perception. Depending on where we're standing on the side of the cylinder, we all um, can just see different things, and it causes us to argue. I remember with my ex-husband, I was, uh, we could watch, I think it was a football game, and we were arguing because I felt like he's ignoring me <laughs> for the stupid football game. I want quality time. And he was like, well, you're disrespectful because it's football, and I'm watching every Sunday, and you're not letting me watch my game. Mm. And it was a constant back and forth that I realized who's right or who's wrong. There is no right or wrong. There is no right or wrong. It's just a difference of perception. You just you have to understand that the quality time is important. Maybe you could have just sat and watched the football game with him, or maybe plan time before or after if you know that's something he loves to do. Like me personally, I don't like football. I hate mm -hmm. watching football. It's, mm -hmm. it's a cult. It is. It's, <laughs> it's, like, a cult. it's a cult. <laughs> uh, you know, they're like, that's my team. No, like, my, like, no. Are they putting money in your pocket? They're like, we, us. No, no, no. It's it's anyways, anyway, but it's it's just an argument of perception, right? And it's no need to get out of out of sorts about it. You know what I mean? Just find a way to make it make it, make it work. So it could either a learn to respect each other's viewpoint. Like, mm -hmm. he can respect the fact that I'm a, I see a square, and I can respect that he sees a circle, and then one of us can yield, or we can both take a step back and both sacrifice and both do what we have and to maybe, do. And maybe, and realize that it's a cylinder. It's just a cylinder. It's a cylinder. If you took, if you look at the 2D, mm -hmm. it's a square and a circle, but if you take a step back and look at the whole picture and see that it's a 3D picture of mm -hmm. a cylinder, then maybe you, neither one of you guys would have been so upset about the situation. Right. And we probably would still be married, but yeah, okay. That is true. Uh, so, <laughs> in common sense, um, common sense is not so common. And, and the reason why that is, is because our common sense is, once again, based on our perception of life. So, you have different people have different perceptions of what life is. Mm -hmm. um, me, personally, I don't stress out over, over money. Um, I just know it'll be there. It's but there are some people that commit suicide if they don't have that money. But... Mm -hmm. um, um, I remember growing up, like we were taught to treat people the way we want to be treated, but we all have different love languages and different ways that we show love. And mm -hmm. what may soothe you doesn't soothe me. So I charge you or implore you to treat people the way that they deserve to be treated, like right. based on their love languages. And I'm going to let you talk about love languages. She recommended this book to me. It's a really great book, but great she's like studied it. So I'm going to let you talk Right. The love languages is, this is a very important topic and if you have not learned it I'll tell you about the book and where to look it up at the end of the uh, the segment but um, basically there's five love languages that we all inherently have I can't get around it so and the first one is physical touch and this is also how we receive and give love so physical touch you can probably know these people because they're touchy feely they're always want to touch you and hug you and you know they're one of those people yes rub the hair rub the back those Great people. <laughs> I know you don't they love you physical touch, and so that's how you, they want. So we talk about treating people the way they want to be treated. So mm -hmm. if I had wronged someone who has physical touch, the best thing I could do is hug them and apologize because they like physical touch. Right. Um, if the second one is words of affirmation to say, "Hey, you're beautiful. You're awesome. Good job. You rock. I'm proud of I'm you. Proud of you. I love you worked you so really much. hard on this. You did good. <laughs> those are great words of affirmation for those people, and they thrive off of hearing them. Uh, my daughter, uh, she was a great words of affirmation. She wants to know all the time. Mommy's proud of you. Mommy loves you. You rock. I'm so look at you do it. Go, girl. She like that. She feels motivated. And that's how she also, but it's weird. Keisha doesn't give words of affirmation. That's not her love language in giving. Okay. It's her love language in receiving. And mm. giving, she's physical touch. Mm. So she wants to hug. She wants to kiss. She wants to do all those things. Mm -hmm. um, quality time is the next one. Where we just want to spend time together. That's that's mine. I, I 
I'll talk you to death. I want to spend time with you, go places with you, do something with you. Just come over. We can have some coffee, eat a Denny's, or whatever we're going to do. That's Denny's me. Moments. We have our Denny's moments. I love our Denny's moments. And they're great. Like, we just went, I uh, got back from vacation. Uh, we were blessed to be able to travel to California with our mom and her daughter and my niece. And it was the best vacation I've Loved ever had. It. Loved, Loved it. it. We got I can't to, wait to go back. Got to fall in love with our mom all over again. We connect because we're so busy. We don't get that time. Um, our mom is Karen. So you'll hear Karen's daughters come up. That's yes. this is us. We're Karen's daughters, but <laughs> so, she is Karen. Yes. She's Karen, and she. Um, we got to fall in love with her all over again during this trip, and quality time all the way there. I'm telling you, we drove straight to California, 24 hours. Well, on the way there, we did stop, but on the way back, we did yeah. And we just talked and sang and laughed and um, enjoyed each other, and then we got to visit family. That was awesome. Quality time is great. That is my um, love language. Next is gifts. The next one is gifts, where you give gifts, you know. And people would think that these people are materialistic or gold diggers, but no, that's just their love language. They give and receive by gifts, mm -hmm. and nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. um, services or acts of service, mm -hmm. which is doing something. I know that's my sister's that's love language. That's definitely mine. Um, acts of service. I am the person who will drive to Fort Worth just to pick you up. I right. will take you to your job interviews. I'll take you grocery shopping. I'll let you live in my house. Right. Like, she doesn't care. I, She'll overextend. All sometimes yes yes sometimes too much but i yeah. that's how i show that i care about right. somebody is to give i think secondary is definitely quality time yes yeah. with you because I, yeah. I love just sitting having time i think a lot of um a lot of smokers their quality time too yeah, i think they are you're chill you're not really doing anything <laughs> you're just sitting there smoking maybe not even talking but just being in somebody's company you know right um it's great um my daughter i think she really kind of flows through all she of does these. karen is little karen we got little karen. Skip. i named she, my daughter after my mom so she's little karen my mom is big karen but she flows through those gifts yes. and she's great at helping no matter what it is mm -hmm. um she wants to take care of you i taught her how to grease my, my scalp and massage <laughs> and she goes oh that makes that you feel good exactly. like she loves it um Words of affirmation. It's th well, physical touch and definitely quality time, mm -hmm. but she loves to get gifts. Um, yeah. When we're in California, like, she was so excited about it. It doesn't matter like, the gift. It really doesn't. She got a knitting <laughs> kit. She loves it. She comes and she knits with Auntie Karen mm -hmm. or Auntie Ebony. Mm -hmm. And um, she'll do anything for you. It doesn't matter what it is. And she just mm -hmm. wants to make everybody happy. Oh, so, yeah. um, the one good thing about the one thing I want to hit on the love languages, and we'll kind of move on from there, but. It's very important to understand just because you may have a primary language, you can definitely learn the other languages. Mm -hmm. It's not etched in stone that your quality time. So that's the only way you can give or receive mm -hmm. love. So when you're in, in love with someone or you're dealing with people, especially your children, it's important to know their love language. Um, if a parent is services, and most parents generally dwell in the acts of service because we go to work, we provide a roof, mm -hmm. we, we, know, we do all these things at Christmas cook time, and we cook and clean, um, but your child may be physical touch. And sometimes we get so busy with being parents that we forget to um, give love to our children in their language. Mm -hmm. So I know growing up, I used to think my dad didn't love me uh, because my love language was quality time, and he was never... We didn't spend time together. He went to work. He paid the bills. He went to sleep. He went to church. Those are that's what he did on a regular. <laughs> he made sure and, your spiritual life, was. right? Our spiritual life was on point. He made sure we we weren't allowed to mm -hmm. to venture outside of that. As for him and his household, we went to church. Very true. Very you know, true. I can and definitely relate to that. With right. Dad, but and he also taught us work ethic. Like definitely work. We ethic. go to work. Mm -hmm. You work, you pay your bills. Don't bother me at work. Right. I'm not going to bother you at work. Don't expect me to text you every 15 minutes while right. I'm at work. I'm, I'm not going to mess with your money because I'm not paying your bills. Not at all. <laughs> and he made us know that uh, the best way to make money is to have our own businesses. So we are striving to be, be self-sufficient yes. because of the lessons taught by our parents. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't until I became a parent myself and realized, oh my goodness, my daddy really did love me because... He didn't have to. That's just what, that's how he showed his love. Like, mm -hmm. I didn't want for anything. I yes. had every single need met, no matter what it was, and he was there. He was so, there. 
I had to to learn and appreciate his love language and learn that I need to start speaking his. So he wants to know well, how do I show him love? I need to do something for that because mm-hmm. he's the acts of service. Dad just wants you to get on your feet. Yeah, that's it, right? I, it. He wants you to, to see you work. Nothing. He wants you to see you pay your bills. He wants that's to see it. you thrive. That's take care of yourself and stay out of my pocket. He wants to know that he taught you something. <laughs> exactly. So, Daddy, I love you. I Thank love you, you, Daddy, too. Thank you taught you. us well. A lot. <laughs> so the books that we recommend that we talked about today, one is The Five Love Languages. That's written by uh, Gary D. Chapman. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find him at uh, thefivelovelanguages.com. Also, Amazon.com sells the book. Um, the website is, is really great. Um, if you're not sure of your love language, there's a quiz there. Mm-hmm. You answer questions, mm-hmm. and based on those questions, it'll tell you what your love language is. Uh, the next book we want to recommend is The Secret by Rhonda Byrne. Um, you can also find her on Amazon. She also has her own website, thesecret.com. And um, they also have an app that will send you uh, daily affirmations called The Secret Affirmations. Mm-hmm. And it's really important for motivation and um, just understanding how to attract the things that you want in life. Um, right. The Secret is a great book. It's also a great movie. Book. If you want to look it up on, on Netflix, I'm, I'm a book person, but I'm a movie person. It's too. also on Hulu. I on realize Hulu? that it is on Hulu.com okay, on Hulu. and Hulu. on Netflix. You can okay. find The Secret. They, um, I, what I liked about Netflix, well, about The Secret, I'm sorry, was um, that it made you realize there's a lot of the things that are going on in my life negatively that I called it to me. Yes. And so it's, it's a, a reforming. And that's probably might be another topic later. But how mm. to change on the way that we think. Change your mind. Change, change your, your life. mind. Change your mind. That change could be your life. next one. That's change your answer. mind. Change your life. That'll change your next mind. Week. Change your life. That'll be um, next week. Normally, this would be our question segment where mm-hmm. you can ask questions. Um, but because we're having difficulties, leave your questions in the comments below when you watch the video. I'll be watching. Callie will be watching throughout the week and we'll answer. Um whatever and this is very shallow we're going to baby step it through but as the weeks come along we will get deeper into it and and touch (laughs) some very touching subjects but um uh we also want to end with karen quotes we call them karen quotes all right my mom talked us to death with quotes she would always say i'm gonna tell you like my daddy (laughs) told me (laughs) and (laughs) and it was always so great pieces of wisdom this is one of my favorite ones um if you fail to plan your life, then you plan to fail. At the very least, you have, have to have, have a plan. plan. Have a plan. Have a plan. Have to be flexible on that plan, though. You yes. can't, it can't be etched in stone because life is, is full of disappointments. And I would tell my kids, out of a hundred things that you throw out there to try, maybe two will go the way you expect it to go. That's true. So be flexible. Flexible. Be flexible in your plan. Right. But, um... Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. We also want to uh, really throw out there really fast. We do have a ladies night out event that is yes. hosted by WRJR Live and that thing you do catering. Um, our lady entrepreneurs, our mm-hmm. lady vendors. Yes. If you want to have a product or service that you want to get out, uh, visit us. At, well, write me an email at ebonyeyes1976 at gmail.com. And show us what you're about, and we'll get with you. You can come out if you're in the Dallas DFW area. Yes, we're going to be in North Dallas, right around, um, not the, it's close to the Galleria, but it's, it's also Carillion right across Towers. the Carillion Towers. Yes. Right. So um, it's every third Saturday of the month. Um, there'll be um, food, wine, uh, vendors coming out. Callie will be representing Goddess, Goddess Callie, Callie doing massages. massage. Um, it's going to be awesome. So awesome. check us out. Um, go to that thing you do catering.com. Register. You can prepay. It is $25, which covers your eating and your drinks. That may change depending, but uh, mm-hmm. right now that's what that is. Also, if you come out to Ladies Night, I'm selling gift certificates. Gift certificates for forty dollars, one hour massage. Normally they're seventy five, but at this event they're only be forty. That doesn't mean you have to have it at the event. No, you don't have to. It's, it's I'm not doing one hour massages at the event. It's just to sell. It's to get you guys to come out because I want you guys to come out a lot. I'm gonna be there. Ebony's gonna be there. My mom's gonna be there. Um, there's gonna be a lot of vendors presenting. Um, come out and network with us. We'd love we're to more see than you. happy to have you. Well, with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and close out. You have a great evening. Good night, and we'll see you next week. Good night.